Hi everyone. It is uh, September 24, 2018. There are so many South Carolinians and North Carolinians who who were spared any flooding, destruction from uh, quote unquote Hurricane Florence. Ten days later, chaos in South Carolina. Florence, the gift that just keeps on giving. Ten days after Hurricane Florence, fresh chaos in South Carolina. And our logic before authority is right smack living in the area that I had posted on, I posted a video I guess two days ago with some government official, it could have been the governor of South Carolina, who said that the Georgetown County area was going to be seeing flooding like you have never seen in your life. Maybe that's why Logic Before Authority titled this video 25,000 year flood happening. Is that in Northeast South Carolina? Because I'm Northeast South Carolina. And there's no flooding here, so maybe that's just a typo, or um, uh, I think he meant southeast uh, right now. So I'm going to link below to everything, as well as this video. But Logic Before Authority needs your help. He needs to evacuate, which means going to a hotel. And there's an awful lot of people who just don't have the money anymore and they do need help and you know it breaks my heart when I hear people apologizing apologizing over and over for needing help for asking for help so logic before authority no apologies it you know I've apologized for asking for help um, that only reflects how sick our country is. And we need to change. I'm really hoping that you guys help out Logic Before Authority and that those of you who are comfortable, can you match my donation of $30? You guys know I have no money. It's because those who have donated to me, I can donate when somebody is asking for help. And I really hope that you do. You know, he almost went homeless. He got this house not too long ago, and now he's looking at like two feet of water into this home and if his home does get flooded he's going to need more help <clears throat> he's going to he's going to be out of his house for a very long time and you know when you fall into the chaos it's um, it's very hard to keep coming back and asking for help So, I will link below to this video, all videos that I'm going to be showing you, and <clears throat> I will also put Logic Before Authorities PayPal um, address, or it's Logic Before Authority at gmail.com. Please give whatever you can, because he does need to get out of there they are on high alert for massive flooding now this is logic before authorities video that he just posted oh my god hurricane florence is coming back hurricane florence she loved vacationing in the carolinas so she has well out of nowhere uh, recreated herself into this which is just off the coast of the Carolinas. Wow. 
She is the gift that keeps on giving. The Harp Report. Very important video. I hope you watch it. I hope you circulate it. I'm just going to play a few minutes of what he has to say about. Now, I did a little bit of research, but I couldn't find uh, that they were calling it Hurricane Florence. Um, I, who the hell knows what they're going to be calling? But it, it came out. Well, they're claiming that it was the strands of Florence. Okay, look, what we are living is completely and utterly unprecedented. Hurricanes did not, well, they were manufactured. Um, and unfortunately, we don't even know when they began manufacturing these hurricanes. But um, this thing, Florence, coming off the coast of Africa, making her way all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to hit North Carolina and sit there for a while. Oh, okay. How does that happen? And then she turns to the south. But, well, she didn't do any damage in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, along the coast of North Carolina. She hardly did any damage. Interesting, isn't it? But massive flooding in Wilmington, and you've seen the, the videos. Their roofs are intact. The trees, the leaves are still on them. It was like a hurricane without wind. Well, the characteristics of a hurricane, number one, wind. Not rain. It's associated with wind. High winds, very destructive winds. But we didn't see much wind damage in Wilmington. What we saw was massive flooding, also in New Bern. And now, well, let's just go on. Florence. Then she makes her way up state South Carolina and western North Carolina, where she had some high winds, but it drizzled. No damage whatsoever. Western and central North Carolina, I've heard from more subscribers who have claimed, no, didn't get much rain at all. But they're claiming that this flooding now is due to the massive amounts of rainfall from Florence that didn't happen, overflowing the rivers, and now the rivers are overflowing all of those rivers leading right into the Atlantic. Oh, okay. Well, I have to say I got a comment from a subscriber who wrote the hurricane is just uh, plausible deniability for them and I believe that person may very well be right and those who have left comments saying they're opening the dams I think you are quite right causing this flooding but then Florence uh, I mean it goes through through Tennessee, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, New York, goes back out into the Atlantic, and then a couple of strands of Florence reform and create this. Really? Have we ever lived anything like this? No. So, we so wish that Americans had that, you know, critical thinking ability, but they've lost it. They've lost it. So, this manufactured. There, now it's visible. And forward again. We're looking right here. There's a divot. And then the, the circular uh, roll clouds, harp downburst roll clouds, radiate away from that at a specific speed. Let me uh, go forward. Okay, so, you know, these waves right here, you can see them clearly. There, there are three concentric arcs here moving away from that center divot. 
And meteorologically speaking, there is absolutely no way to explain that because we're talking a super localized high pressure of a downburst of air. See, you can't really see it when it's too big, the pixelization. Okay, this is actually better. Smaller is better to see it. You might have to go full screen on this. But what they're doing, these big Navy ships are heating the ionosphere right here. Um, 50 miles up, it expands rapidly and actually pushes down on the top of the jet stream. And we're seeing this divot in the clouds. And then some 30, 40, an hour later, these roll clouds propagate outward. And we can see how many times, let me just go back and forth right here. So you can actually see, see that? There's a stationary spot in the top of the clouds. That's the ionospheric heater divot. Let me make it bigger and see if we can watch that. Back, forward. But you can see right here, there's something stationary. Everything around here, this is cloud tops, you know, 30,000 feet up. And everything's moving except this divot. How can that possibly be? It's because the ionospheric hotspot is stationary. Forward. You can see it clearly there. See that? That is a stationary hotspot with a divot. And so this, they're actually blowing a, a hole in the ionosphere that's thousands of miles in area, thousands of square miles. So here you have this uh, low pressure leading edge building up here and they hit it with the ionospheric heater create artificial high pressure in the jet stream and then later you have the harp roll clouds propagating out from the center and then as the yeah that's a really nice view right here these uh, roll clouds coming clearly from this area right here and this is a gift from the GOES people that normally they Photoshop this, you'll never see it. For some reason they have given us a gift so we could see it. And then as the morning rolls on, guess what? That upper high pressure takes over and stops all the clouds, all the... And you can see all the propagation right on the edge, the periphery of this uh, whatever. I, I, how do you even call it a storm? I will link below. Clear proof of ionospheric heating acting on cloud tops. And the Harp Report is very excited to have to have seen that. Um, South Carolina, we are drowning, flooding, prayers please. Robin Simple Life. Um, this is this is just a few blocks from where she lives. This footage that's being taken is not far from where I live. It's only uh, about ten, 9 or 10 blocks away. Um, as of right now, all access roads in and out of my complex are now flooded. Can't get out, can't get in. The river is starting to spill over into the street behind me. It's supposed to flood either 2 or 3 more feet by tomorrow. And hopefully it'll crest by Tuesday or Wednesday, meaning it'll start receding. Um, please, please pray that it does not come into my yard or near my house, which is just a block over. Um, we have nowhere to go. We have absolutely nowhere to go. So um, let me play this video for you. I'm sorry, I couldn't download this video. It's on my personal Facebook, so I'm hoping that you can see this aerial footage. So um, let me just hit the play button. This is the Methodist church in town, and I take the road that goes past this church all the time. It's one of my, you know, one of my ways I get to go to, you know, the food store, Walgreens, this whole entire area here, this is all my side of town. This isn't even the other side of town. So, I mean, it's just, look at the water, look at the oil and the, the oil and the gasoline and the water. As I said, this is only about 9 or 10 blocks away from me. It's not very far at all. But look at the water. Look at the oil. I just want to show you something. 
Look at the clouds. Look at the reflection of the clouds in the water. And you can see all of the microwaves being used. It really is unfortunate that we cannot get through to people. They claim that we're crazy, but you can even see the reflection of the clouds in the water and you can see how unnatural they are. You can see the microwaves. Now, I got a comment from somebody and I am, all right, you've heard, well, some of you have heard for six years, me um, getting really frustrated, angry that we can't get through to people. And, uh, you know, at times I've said things um, that actually do reflect the truth, but, you know, it's harsh and it's, uh, but I still have no wish for any of these people to suffer. I don't know if any of you feel the same. Um, there's still compassion that I have. And I just want to say that to prevent anybody else from leaving comments claiming these are the people who are choosing willful ignorance. And therefore, they deserve everything that they get. Well, you're not choosing willful ignorance. And so many of my subscribers have not chosen willful ignorance. And they're suffering the consequences as well. Um, so, regardless of um, the low consciousness, the you know ego-driven consciousness that so many people are living out their lives, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And Robin has posted another video just driving through her area. Now this video was earlier today, and this was 23 hours ago. So the rivers are already flooding out an awful lot of businesses and homes. And Robin says, well, let me see if I put it at the right spot. This is actually where the water is, and it looks like it's right there, but I can't tell. I can't tell. That's it, guys. Uh, we're stuck. There's no way out. There's no way out. There's no way in. Somebody Somebody. The roads are closed and flooded, and bridges have already been closed down, and many bridges have flooded. This is Longs, South Carolina. Poor soul actually poor soul. lives in the middle of all this. It's actually houses over there. I will link below. But, you know, I see this and I think Hurricane Harvey. And I think, you know, um, a friend of mine in Houston, she survived Harvey, but didn't survive the Army Corps of Engineers releasing the reservoirs after Harvey. So, so many people now are getting to experience their homes flooded, their businesses flooded, their towns flooded after the hurricanes leave. Isn't that interesting? Um, I'm just going to I'll link below to this uh, these websites, Georgetown County, where they're posting information. Free transportation on Tuesday for county residents who need help reaching 
emergency evacuation shelters, and um, you can call. Uh, the only time it's available is tomorrow from noon until 4 p.m. So if you need to evacuate and you don't have any transportation, you can call them and they'll drive you to Georgetown High School or Waccamaw Middle School. They accept pets, but they will only accept them if they are crated. Here's the telephone number, 843-545-3195, if you wish to schedule a ride. Um, and it says here, shelters should also bring anything their families will need during their stay, including bedding. I'm going to let you listen to a few minutes of a Facebook video that I heard earlier today, and those subscribers who have sent me some of this information, I want to thank you for that, but I will also link below to um, Georgetown County moves to OpCon 1 ahead of flooding. Some residents strongly urge to evacuate. OpCon 1 is the highest state of emergency operations. It indicates that a disaster or emergency situation is in effect and that full-fledged emergency response operations are now ongoing 24-7 until it's no longer ongoing. So residents who live in flood zones along the intra-coastal intra waterway, Waccamaw River and PD River, or who live in areas that may not be in a flood zone but may become isolated due to deteriorating road conditions are strongly urged to consider evacuation for their safety. All right, you know, I went on in telecast. When was it? Uh, I think it was yesterday. And, well, I didn't see this. Look at the tracking of what the hell is this? What is it? They're calling this a tropical storm? Really? Leslie. Leslie. Hasn't Leslie been pretty much in the same place for a while. Or maybe it was some other name. But these are obviously, uh, you can see that they are not natural at all. They've got little, you know, these uh, cotton balls that blow up. Manufactured cloud. All right, but look at the tracking of this. Are you kidding me? What, what? the hell is this tracking? What is this? Oh. Oh. Is it going this way? I don't know. Uh, strange. Okay. What, what, this is our hurricane. This is, but no tracking here. You can see all of the propagation in the in the entire look at this are you kidding me I mean they couldn't make it more obvious that this is not quite right frequency hits right here um, that they have the straight edge lines oh, my god look at this thing Oh, God, Americans, please wake up. See what is right before your eyes. Weather is being used as a weapon. Wow, okay. You see this laser shot into, well, what, Florence? Another hurricane? What's going to be? And look, North Carolina. But we saw Hurricane Florence. Uh, well, she was, she hit Wilmington, sat there, and then made a, a left hand turn and decided to go south. All right. Well, you can see all of the manufacturing. This is, this is the 
the factory. Look at the United States as a factory now, producing so much weather. These straight-edged storms, really interesting. Unbelievably manipulated by frequencies. Um, Mother Nature does not work in straight lines, but all of our Doppler radar shooting off. But we've got these, we've got this laser beam shooting right into that storm. Oh, and you know, because we were told by Michukaku, whatever the hell his name is, lasers! We can shoot lasers into cloud and make it rain. Well, you got a laser coming right into this storm. Hit three times and it gets bigger. Um, and you can see all of the ultra low frequencies also going, going strong, which is the uh, fanned out straight edge lines right here. And we've got another beam attack right here and right there. All right, um, here is the Georgetown, South Carolina flooding evacuation information. This was posted 10 hours ago. They apparently had a press conference today at 3 p.m. and they haven't updated their Twitter with information about the conference. But the purpose of this press conference will be to give an update on anticipated river flooding and evacuation in Georgetown County where Logic Before Authority lives and they're about to evacuate 8,000 people. They're on alert. Um, you know, it's really interesting because there's still 14 hours ago they're saying possible about ev evacuations. High alert for evacuations. Mainstream media and these uh, Twitter pages and Facebook pages of these counties, the official county sites. They keep talking about flooding like you've never seen before. They haven't, at this point, uh, begun mandatory evacuations. I guess they're just leaving it up to people. You evacuate if you want. They are saying that if you don't evacuate, you're not going to be able to get out because they're closing down roads and bridges. It does, there's something off here. And the map that Logic Before Authority shows you right here is potential. And look, and look. So the potential flooding on this map is massive. But it's potential. Okay. But there is flooding going on north of this area. I just don't understand why they haven't mandated evacuations if they're claiming that this is an absolute, the, the massive flooding will be absolute, and yet they talk about possible evacuations. That, that there's something um, not quite right there. And I want to say that anybody who feels, well, it may not flood, and I'm not going to donate because his house may be fine. Um, he needs the help now because if this flooding does occur, as they say it's going to occur, it's going to happen really fast. So you need to prepare. You need to pack up. You need to get out of there. You need to go into a hotel if you can't, you know, get to any other place. Um, and even if you're going to a shelter, you still need, you know, some... Uh, cash or something and if this does occur 
then you're looking at staying out of your home for a long time. So, um, so if it doesn't happen, then logic before authority will have a bit of a cushion. You know, good. That's good. You know, he has provided a tremendous amount of information. So either way, you know, I, I think it's really important. But I want you to hear what is being said about shelters and FEMA and what is happening in North Carolina. So I would recommend that if anybody can not go to a shelter, do not go to these shelters. Based on what you hear in this video, um, he's talking to a woman in the beginning. I'm going to let you listen to a few minutes of what this guy has to say about North Carolina, Winston-Salem, uh, his uh, officials. Um, but apparently... The governor is not allowing any outside help. The shelter in, I think, the New Bern area, um, people are getting sick. People are sleeping on the floor. People aren't allowed to leave. Click on the link below and listen. But listen to what this man has to say. Yes, sir. Um, um, I have, I'll tell you, I crashed out I crashed pretty, pretty early. I pulled, uh, I pulled about 48 hours straight before I fell over like a dead man. So I missed out on this yeah. stuff Denise is talking about other than, um, I knew the, uh, I knew the mayor down there at Newburn was giving them some issues. Um, I know our crews are down there. I know some other crews from here in this area that, like I say, at this point in time, all, a lot of us that don't work well together, we decided it's best we work together because it's a joint effort and for the people. Um, some of those people are in there, they're going to start cooking for the teams down there, cooking for the people in the neighborhoods. Um, but here's my problem. Um, I got something I, I want to read to you. And I'm going to tell you how this, this is how the uh, this is how the governments work. This is my local government right here in Winston-Salem. I've been fighting with these, yeah. and I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna call them just like what I see it this morning because I'm pretty pissed. These assholes here, they're working just like the people down there on the coast do, just like New Orleans did, just like they did on you guys in Texas, like FEMA tried to do in Florida. Um, our our local government works right in line with the corrupt side. Uh, right here in Salem, this storm was supposed to go around us. I wouldn't worry about hurricanes as much as I was at kicking off tornadoes and stuff. And um, our black companies have been have been pulverized by the local governments. I mean, we're working with gentrification projects. We're trying to get that stopped. Um, our government here is running nonprofits that take the land and then turn around and sell it to big business and our politicians. What happened in Lockport? That's exactly what happened in Lockport. Well, they're doing that shit with these people still alive, no natural disasters. I mean, they're just kicking people right in the teeth. So what I've done was we've got a, we've got a young lady that's right here in Winston that I work with, and she works with the black communities, and she's trying to make them understand what's going on. And uh, I love her to death. So, so she put a post up about what our emergency management department was doing here in Winston-Salem. What was our plan? What kind of shelters we have? Stuff like that. We're the home of Wake Forest University, Winston-Salem State University, which is a, uh, mostly a nursing college. Pretty, pretty big, you know, pretty big money around here. Um, so let me read you. Let me read you what our emergency plan was for a city the size of Winston Salem and for Scythe County conjoined, because we're under a unity development program where the city runs the county, which we're trying to figure out how to prove it's you know it's a very unconstitutional thing. Yeah, it is absolutely. The number they give us to call is two one one, which takes you into the United Way. <laughs> this is what they said is our emergency plan for the city of Winston-Salem and the county of Forsyth here in North Carolina that the hurricane is going to surge. If you call them, call the United Way back, they, you can log your phone number in, and they're going to text you about nasty weather conditions. They're going to send you a free text to tell you that you got a damn hurricane over <laughs> Their rescue protocol, if you call in, now get this, this is rescue protocol. When you call in, they're going to tell you to move to the highest point of your house. 
That's the whole rescue protocol. Move to the highest point of your house. What if it's a damn tornado and not flooding? What are you going to do? Go in your damn ceiling so when it rips the roof off, it carries you and your family away? That's their protocol. Only thing for the city of Winston-Salem County for sight. Go to the highest point of your house. We had two shelters. Arch Memorial Coliseum. It does not take that. That's against federal law. The second one is in Hall River, North Carolina, which is an hour, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes away. That's our shelters. They take dogs, but they go to the pound. Okay. If you don't if have you transportation, don't have transportation to, get to get to these shelters, EMS, rescue, and all, and everything else can't come and get you. Our lift program, which is for uh, elderly and uh, disabled, lift will come and get you, and you get a code to punch in on your phone for a discount. What? Yeah, for a discount. Now. Now, check this check out. This out. If we go to we evacuating, go to evacuating the closest hotel that we're connected we're with for evacuation for right here in right Winston-Salem, North, North Carolina, Carolina, the closest hotel that we're logged to is New Jersey. New Jersey. All right, listen. They allow they one allow family one per room. You can listen to this entire video, but they sure do uh, give you an awful lot of information that will let you know that FEMA ain't your friend. And these local officials, how they are handling it, well, you see Trump, oh, great, great, you know, everybody, everybody applauds, you know, themselves and each other, great coordination, oh my God, I am just so, um, uh, you know, everything, everybody working on, you know, the coordination of, you know, the rescues and um, helping people couldn't have been better. You know, it's like narcissists get together and they just applaud each other and themselves. And then you hear from the real ordinary people and you hear a very different story. So, um, I'm telling everybody that you really do need to have an evacuation plan no matter where you are living in the United States, but anywhere in the world now, because they are using weather as a weapon. So whether it's going to be earthquakes or tornadoes or flash flooding uh, or hurricanes or something that happens in areas that ne it never happened before. I mean, Canada, in an area of Canada, they saw tornadoes that did an awful lot of de destruction, but you never had tornadoes in that area. Well, when man is controlling weather, they can bring it upon you and you don't have to be living in Tornado Alley. You, know, you can be flooded out now and not live in a flood plain. And this is happening repeatedly to an awful lot of people. So everybody, you need to have, you know, some kind of an evacuation plan. What would be great is... You know, if families got together, you know, and uh, made an evacuation plan, all of you together, you know, if this occurs, you know, you present scenarios, and then you have some kind of an evacuation plan where you're going to be safe and living in a home of someone that you trust, and you'll be safe in that home. You know, friends get together, do the same thing. What would be wonderful if communities, if we had community today, that they could come together, neighbors, you know, and um, create an evacuation plan where it would um, keep you safe and you would not have to rely on government. Have an evacuation plan that includes all of your pets and have that bag ready to go. Don't wait because so much is happening immediately and people are having to evacuate, you know, in with no time. So I'll link below to everything. I'm going to end with asking one more time, can you help Logic Before Authority out? That would be greatly appreciated by Logic Before Authority. I'm quite sure.
chowders.